Hello again, everybody. It's Harry Boxer, the technical trader at thetechtrader.com. It's Saturday, the 5th of August. This is the weekend webinar, an eventful week and a weak one for Wall Street as we reached up towards the top of the channels and lateral resistance and came down to test support. And they closed at the lows for the week going away, at least on the S&P 500, which finished at 44.78. As far as I can see, that's the pretty, pretty much at the low for the week, uh, just about four points away. <clears throat> on Friday, we dropped 23.86 or a half a percent. Right now, we're on the trend line. Beneath that, we have the moving average and lateral price support. That comes in around 4,400 and 43.40. Those are levels to keep an eye on. Resistance is at Friday's high, 45.40. And then we're looking up at 46.07. Oh, oh, uh, so look, we're at, if you look at the trend line, we've been up since March. A long, long move. One, two, three, four, five, perhaps. Now, this could be the beginning of something worse. And Friday was an engulfing bearish day for the S&P 500. I would look for a downside move early in the week, and then we'll see if we bounce. And if we don't, obviously, we come down to 43.25 or worse. Beyond that, looking at 43, uh, 42.20. So uh, lots, of, lots of concern for me, and we'll take a look at the rest of the indices. The NASDAQ 100, not much better, although a little bit. You can see this did not break down per se, and it's held for through three or four weeks now above the 15 to 70, 75 range. They closed right there. Any further damage, and we're going to test 15,040, which is where the 50 day moving average comes in. That's about 235 points down. So that, that could get ugly if that happens. We'll see. Um, there might be an early dip and then a bounce, but. If we break 15,040, we're headed to 14,735, something like that, or worse. So fasten your seatbelts, folks, and start protecting your portfolios with some protection. We'll talk about that a little later. The transportation index in a beautiful rising channel. It has been since June. When it was trading at 13,647. Last week reached a high of 16,7 about 3,000 points above where it was just in June. So yeah, we're long in the tooth and the market has pulled back, but it might be more something like that in terms of a consolidation. We'll have to see if there's a downside movement. And if there is, the 21 day moving average comes in at 16.133 and price support comes in at 16.013. So we have some room to drop, consolidate and test, but anything below that, it would probably head it to 15.750, maybe even 15.4 on a much deeper retrace. Small cap index holding as well, but pretty much at a position where it could be a little head and shoulder top. And we've only had a one, two, three, four, so there might be more to go in the small cap index, particularly if the market doesn't fall apart here. But um, I would say that this pullback low, 193, below that could see 188.90 or worse. So that's the tenuous position the indices are in right now. And looking at the oscillator, I want to see the underlying technicals. We're at minus 55. So we're not steeply oversold that we can go much lower into the minus 110, 20 range or even deeper to 200 and 250 where we reached a couple times in the last few years. You can see here, here and here, we reached down below 250. So I would expect something like that before it's over on the downside or at least something in that zone down there. The VIX is just starting to move. It could accelerate if it gets through here. Um, target be 21. 24 and a half and then 30. Beyond that, look, where, who knows where this can go. But we do have a kind of a multiple waves down, one, two, three, four, five, fifth wave truncated or shortened, double, triple bottom, and now moving up. It's hard to say if this follows through to the upside or not, but if it does, that could be an indicator we are going lower as fear rises. Um, I know you haven't heard me talking bearishly for a while, but I, this, is, this is a major concern for me right now, but particularly this time of year, September, October which historically can be a weak time for the markets. We'll see. A look at the NASDAQ 100 generals. Apple, of course, a major component and, and a major reason why the market dropped. After the earnings report, they fell short on sales. This thing plummeted with a breakaway gap to the downside on record volume. Or at least I say, I wouldn't say record volume, but strong, strong volume. This is the biggest volume we've seen in Apple. Um, even bigger than that day, let's see. Yes, yeah, since back here, when trade, it's pretty much the same. As strong as any volume we've seen on a downside in a long, long time. 
since beat last year. So that breakaway gap is a major concern for me. When you get the market, the market leader, breaking down with the breakaway gap through the moving averages, through the trend lines, through lateral support, this could easily be 178 on Monday, and maybe as low as 170 at some point in the next cut there, two or three, which could create a bit of, I think, panic, not panic, but major concern on Wall Street. And even if you take a look at the connecting these lows, this has a definite breakaway down on the channel on Apple. That tight channel broke. So major concern there. Amazon, the opposite because of earnings, but will that last? You can see the, the wedge and the breakaway gap to the upside. But where did it get to? Well, the high back in August of last year was 146.57. Friday's high, 143.63. So a little short of that. And if it fails here, and it was a reversal at the matter of fact, it closed under 140, still up, you know, 10 and change, but it was up, I think, 17. So this is pulled back down. It could be a reversal bar. We'll see. Um, it is a concern, of course. What about Google? Well, Google popped and reversed. Watch next week early on the 127 and three quarters. We could be down at 122 and a half, 23 or worse. We break the trend line, look out below, the whole market falls apart. This is a one, two, three, four and a fifth wave, but it looks like a one, two, three, four. So there might be one more wave up in the market. A lot of people are talking about that. A lot of people I know who are astute technical analysts think there may be one more leg up, but I'm obviously concerned about where we are right now. Or Monday, Tuesday will be very important. Let's go through some others. Microsoft. Microsoft spiked up to, a month ago to a new all-time high at 36678. It is now 40 points below that, 40. And above a key level, that is a major concern if it cracks. That's 327 here and 322 and a half there. That 323.7 zone is key, key, key. If you break that, we're headed towards 300 or even 295. You can see it's now below the moving average for three days in a row, which is the first time I've seen that since way back in here. So, I mean, this calls for major concern here if we crack any lower on Microsoft. NVIDIA. Well, um, wonderful chart. It's still above the moving average in the price support. But NVIDIA's Wednesday low of 433.87 is what I want you to monitor. You take that out, you're looking at 425. And then 406. You know, obviously we, we're looking for, and by the way, this trend line that I've been drawn in here connecting the lows of the last couple of months, slightly broken and then bounced. So a takeout of Wednesday's low, in my opinion, would be a negatory. That's under 433.87. Um, on the upside, of course, if they hold and break out above 470, uh, you know, 89, we could see 520.30. Uh, again, I, again, a lot depends on the first couple of days of the week, in my opinion. What, what about um, Netflix? Well, Netflix has been weak for uh, and reversed about three weeks ago. It held a moving average, which is right where there is. And what is formed here? Folks, this is a, any way you look at it, this is a very distinct left shoulder, head, and right shoulder. So, break of the neckline below 4, 11 and 3 quarters, 4, 12. Probably get you down to 388.95 in that zone. And that's a one, two, three. If we bounce and fail at 412, we could be down to 365. There's a lot of reasons why this is looking top of me. Be careful on Netflix. Meta. And, and by the way, you know Netflix had that huge monster run. In one year, 162 to 478. Now that's a triple, 200% in one year for, for that stock. Uh, institutions are going to take profits if they, they say this break. And right now, that is a bare wedge. Simple as that. Meta, well, um, it's intact. It's got a beautiful coil, but it's right, or, you know, or wedge, whatever you want to call it, but it's right at the gap support 310 range. It closed at 310.79. You can see how a break of that area and a take out a take out of 305 could lead down to 290. Below 290, kitty bar the door. So, I mean, on the upside, of course, the market suddenly reverses and turns up. We're headed to 345. But caution on all of these NASDAQ generals. And lastly is Tesla. And you can see how Tesla broke down like Netflix did. And that too has what looks like a topping type pattern to me. Left shoulder head and maybe a flat right shoulder. Bottom line is though, watch this level at 17, 
I'm sorry, wrong stock, my bad. Similar. Breakdown and a, and a bull, and a bear, excuse me, a bear coil. Why is it a bear coil? Because it comes down off of a down move and sets a coil up. Watch this level. On Wednesday, we had a low of 250 and a half. Under 250, I'm looking at 239, 229, and 220. Overall, we're still in an uptrend and we're pulling back to the moving average. But once that moving average is broken to the downside, that would be a takeout under 250. Tesla's in trouble. So you can see the concern I have on many of these stocks. NASDAQ 100 generals could lead this market lower if they break their current patterns. That's what's the concern right here. Let's take a look at the um, major ETS we follow. The SMH, which has been a leader and had multiple waves up, kind of double topped at about 161. And then it came down, bounced, but look where it is. For me, it's right on the trend line because if I connect it properly, pull back low, pull back low, pull back low, moving average, which is right now at 151.47, that's the 50 day. If the SMH makes a 50 day moving average at 151.47, uh, we would like to see 146 and a half, three quarters, and maybe a plunge to 143, at which point you have near the trend line as well. I can't tell you yet if it holds here or not. But I will say this is an important area. And the double top at 160, 61 is the takeout point. If you do that, you're headed to 168.9. So you can see where we are. All these are of a concern. Financials, well, it's very similar. And hey, it finally started a rising channel, but now they pull back to support. There's a trend line there too. Comes in a little bit below it. But the key is Thursday's low for me at 68 and a half. And the resistance. Certainly 74 and three quarters. So which way are we going to go, up or down? Well, we break down, we're probably headed to the moving average. Um, let's just say this. The first target would be a retest of 66, and then the 50-day moving average of 64. Those are the two levels to watch on the downside. We break that, it's Katie Bar the door. Financials have been, been, I wouldn't say under pressure the last couple of weeks, but we certainly are coming down. As you can see. Okay, that's the financials and also the biotechs have been weak. LABU and XBI are not doing well. Here's what I'm looking at. For me, this is right on the precipice. What I mean by that is we had a nice one, two, three, four, five waves up and now it's one, two, three wave down. But if that breaks to the bottom of this channel, we could see something down towards um, four and three quarters or worse. XBI is a better indicator right now. You can see the one, two, three, four, five waves up to resistance and a pullback. The run up here to me looks like a rising wedge. It failed right around where the moving averages are, it came down and bounced. It came down again and bounced. My problem is this. There's a line across here that's key support. If this breaks, this could plunge into the high 70s, mid 70s. Looking at that zone of 75, 76 and a half as a possible, if we crack, if we crack hard, it may not be pretty. First target is around 77 and a half and then 75 and a half, if it breaks. Not happy at all with what I'm seeing, folks. <clears throat> In particular, the XBI biotechs and the FAS financials, although the financials don't look bad until they break. The SMH is stronger of the lot, but it's still at support as well. So an early breakdown Friday, on Monday, excuse me, of all these indices and the NASDAQ generals could just tank the market. And I mean, when I say tank, it, I'm not saying crash scenarios there, but it is possible. Okay, everybody. Now, we've covered all the ETFs for the, uh, the major favorite ones, but I want to talk, go over oil, gold, silver, gas, etc. Here's the oil. And obviously, a surprise to the upside with the USO gush moving. Look at the uh, move on the USO since uh, production cuts by Russia and Saudi Arabia were announced and now reiterated. This is the USO has gone 62 to 74. And it's gotten a slight breakout of a base pattern that tell, tells me, wow, this could be 78, 79, 80 before not too long, especially if the market tanks. Because it's hard to say, but right now it's in a bullish configuration. What about the UCO? It's similar, but it hasn't broken out yet. You can see here, it needs to break out and get above that. The gush, 
one of our favorite trading vehicles, the right at resistance and both declining top line and lateral price resistance. Break out here, we probably headed to 165, and then we'll see where we go from there. Gas, well, the UNG is formed what I would call a base pattern, but it's coiling now and it's within base pattern, so it's hard to call the direction. Anything under six and a half would be negatory. I move over 783 and we're in bullish territory and breakout territory. So I call that kind of neutral. If you look at the opposite, the ETF bear cold, um, it's come down and it has what I consider a bear flag. So if you take this in consideration, and we're looking for lower levels down about 45, 50 and 45, then probably the UNG breaks to the upside and runs into the 8, 9, 10 zone. But that's all conjecture. We have to wait for a trigger and a buy signal. Well, that's what I guess. Gold, well, I don't know why anybody's excited about gold, quite frankly. Yeah, we broke out here, had a couple of days of movement, and they came right back down again or at support. If and only if it holds here, would I be more optimistic? If it doesn't hold here, that's what I'm looking for. A test of 26 or about three points down, maybe three and a half points down on GDX. So be really careful. They all look the same, so I'm not going to go over them, but I will say, look at Nugget real quickly at the lows right there and the JNUG, all at support or just above it. So it's going to be interesting to see if gold reacts positively while the market comes down or vice versa or whatever. Anyway, that's my look at those ETFs. Um, he's covered oil and gas and gold. And I'm going to just say quickly, the AGQ silver doesn't look much better. You can see it broke support. It broke the moving average. It's filled that gap. It tried to reverse. It's pretty weak. But at least this one's still above the channel bottom where the gold, GDX, for example, is broken through it. So I'm going to stay neutral on, on precious metals for now. We have a lot of stocks to talk about on the long side. There are just a few shorts, but I'm still, I still have a lot of work to do on the short side. Here's what I'm seeing on the, on the long side, and these are my bullish charts. AAOI with a base and explosive move came down in a three-wave corrective, held support, and bounced sharply Friday in particular, up 64% on 32 million shares, pretty 32.7. And it ran right back up to the high, thinking this goes higher, 13 and a half and 15 targets. How about ACHR? Stair stepped its way higher and finally came down. Got your aviation, pulled back to support. If it isn't done, retesting seven and moving to eight and a half would be targets. Stay tuned. AEHR, nominal one, two, three, four. It pulled back and bounced on Friday. It's still like the overall look of this. I still think it's in a bullish flag type consolidation. As long as it holds support, this may step up its way higher. Where's the next target? I'm not kidding when I say mid to high 60s, something like that. AI, well, still waiting for a breakout and it may not. If it does, it's got to take out this high 4490. Then you're on your way to 47, 50, 55, et cetera. But any breakdown under 35 and a half, 36, and we're close to it could lead to a big, sharp drop. First, 31, and then maybe 27. I know we're long, and we'll stay long until we crack. Same with AMD. Take a look. Long-term uptrend, current three-month consolidation. It's going to need a move above 122 to really break out. Then you're looking at 131, 145, and 160. But stop would be under here, 107. That, that would be very dangerous. AMPH in a beautiful rising channel currently flagging or coming out of this little coil. My target, 70 plus. AMRX, beautiful rising channel. Look at the pop on Friday. Jumping 71 cents to 21% on a lousy market. Always a good sign relative strength wise. It looks like this double bottom and this high here, we're right about where we're at, a little bit above it, has just broken out. The next target is about 465 to 5 zone. AMSC, base, coil, flag, explosive move, and a big sharp pullback. So this one may have reversed and reversed hard from a high of 17.37 down at 10. Anything under nine and a half would be a stop. It's dangerous looking. ANIP, beautiful rising channel, one, two, three, four, five waves up, and now a platform flag. Now if that flag breaks out, we can see the stock at 57, 60, and more. Stop under 49. APLD broke out of a base. We went long. 
it's been consolidating for a couple months now, three, four times trying to break out above 10, 10, 11. It's pulled back and it needs to hold and it stops under six and three quarters. APP, beautiful rising channel, also went a one, two, three, four, fifth wave up. But more importantly, it's broken through key resistance. It might now be ready for 40, 41, my next target zone. That's 10 points from here. We'll see if it accelerates or not. ARDX, big rising uptrend, beautiful bull coil. It broke out. It got up to resistance and backed off. But watch this level. ARDX takes out four and a quarter. We go long, especially if there's volume. What would be the target? A retest of five and then six. Arlo popped out, coiled, flagged. Coiled again, broke out with a breakaway gap. And now, flagging again. Great chart. Should it break out above 11 and a half with volume? We can look at 13 and a half and 16 as targets. AUDC on Tuesday broke out and then for the rest of the week flagged, but Broke break out with a breakaway gap and increasing volume had me interested in swinging it. I think the stock could go to 13, 15 or more. EUR breaks out of a base, forms a wedge, we go long. It then popped at the first target and pulled back and popped to that target again and pulled back, but it's holding the trend line. Uh, I think it could rip into the four, four and a half, three quarter range. BBIO, explosive breakaway gap and now flag. Will it hold? 40 and 44 your targets if it does. BORR, a beautiful rising channel for the last two years, taking it from under a dollar to nine. Can it go further? It targets 11 three quarters if it does. BTBT in the crypto realm, V bottom, right handed extension, a rising channel. Now an extended flag with support at about 360, 70. We hold that great. Got to get through 465 target at five three quarters. C, C Bay. You can see that Seabay has um, popped and um, pulled back. It's in a rising channel. The target is 13 and three quarters and 15. CCL, fantastic inverse head and shoulder breakaway move and a sharp run up. Now it's gone from under eight to over 19 and a beautiful coil has developed. If it breaks out of here, 20 and 23 are your targets. CDLX, the beautiful inverse head and shoulders. When it broke out, we put a swing on it. We then pulled back and tested, ran up dramatically. This is a beautiful run. 845 to 1520, nearly doubling in a week. It's now flagging. This looks absolutely stellar. I have a target of 18. Confluent, nice base breakout pullback. And it broke out of the base. We went long, but then pulled back. And it actually broke support, I believe. And now it bounced sharply. But it's reversed again on Friday. So this is dangerous. Just be careful. CGNT, breakaway move, we put a swing. Actually, it popped out and pulled back, and then we put a swing on it near four. It ran to six, 50%, pulled back, and popped again. Keep an eye on this one. Targets are six and a quarter and seven and a half. CLS, beautiful breakout, rising channel, breakaway gap, reversal, and then pop. Little flags forming, target 24. CLSK, another uh, crypto-related. Uh, had a nice run and a beautiful um, breakout of the base here. One, two, three, four. If there is a fifth wave, eight and a half is your target. Um, coherent. Strong run up from the um, mid 20s to the low 60s. What a nice move. And then a one, two, three wave corrective coil. It seems to have popped Thursday, Friday. We'll just have to see if I, if they can, um, uh, if we can do something um, after it breaks out and follows through. Resistance is 53 and 59. Cook, nice breakaway right there. Breakaway gap inside day Friday. Usually when that happens, you'll see higher levels. Looking for seven and eight. Court, exploded and pulled back. Closed strong, be tested on Friday, had an inside day. Looking for this to make an additional upside move, and uh, probably targeting mid-30s. CRBU, breakaway gap, pull back, flag, pop, wedge, and put a swing on it, but it backed off. It needs to break back out. I need a stock over 7.5 with energy, targeting then 8.5, 3 quarters, and 10. 
CVLG, Covenant Logistics and the Trucking Group, one of the stronger ones along with XPO. Great chart, broke out last week. It's flagging extension targets 65 and 72. VBI, uh, long downtrend, breakaway gap, ran up and pulled back and now wedging. It looked like it broke out Friday. When I want to see, your targets are 11 and 13. Dropbox broke out on Friday after having a long recovery run from 19 to 28. It pulled back to test support. It held it, held the moving average as well. It stops on the 25 and a half, but if it gets to 28 and a half, we can see 31, 32. DraftKings, uh, um, look, that's been a swing of ours since it broke out here. It's been wonderful. Um, big breakout on Friday, but a strong pullback with the market. Nevertheless, it did pop and break out. What I want to see, it kind of get over Friday's high of 34 and a half. Then we're looking at high 30s, low 40s. DMRC exploded, coiled, and broke out. Big time breakout Friday, Thursday, excuse me, with a gap and a follow through on Friday. Extension targets 44.5 and 52.3. DO um, in the oil sector, after a long coil broke out and now it's flagging. Wow, is that strong? I have a target near 20. DBAX, nice rising channel. Hold trend line and price support there. Spiked on Friday at $1.29. Extension target is 15 and 17. EDU, after six, seven months of consolidating, it finally broke out, and it's been running. It's a very sharp rising angle. I like the look of it. And I think it isn't done yet. 61 and 66 are targets. EH, Chinese aerospace, breaks out of a coil, pops and retests, and then stair steps its way higher. Right now it's flagging. If it continues, the angle of ascent, next target is 24 and 30. Elon, nice inverse head and shoulder breakaway gap and a platform. Normally, with this stock, will make higher highs. My targets are uh, 13 and 15. EPM, junior oil and gas evolution petroleum breaks through triple, quadruple top flags and keeps going. Now, 11, 11 to 13 are targets. EVLO breaks out of a base, forms a little wedge. Keep an eye on this one. Break out of the wedge, and we're looking at 26 and a half. That's a long way up. Let, let me change that. Ah, 14 and 19. EVLV breaks out of a base, runs up, and has a rising channel. In my opinion, we're looking at seven and a half, three quarters for the next target. EXPI breaks out of a beautiful base, forms a flag, and pops out of that. Now it's got another flag. In essence, I think it's a one, two, three, four, five wave. One, two, three, and four. And the fifth wave should take me to 30, 32. EXTR breaking out of a basin consolidation, and now it's running up in a beautiful rising channel. My target's 35. EYPT with a beautiful pop coil breakout and continues to push. I like the look of this. Next target, 15. Finger, FNGR. It appears to me it's consolidating for the next move. First, we need to take out seven, seven and a quarter, and then you're looking at eight and nine and a half. FREE, a breakaway gap and a beautiful platform. Um, interesting pattern. Got a target of four and three quarters and six. FRO breaks out of a mini base in, within a larger rising channel and may be headed for a retest of the March highs at 18 and a half. We get through that looking at 22.3. FRPT, if a long base is formed, this stock is finally broken out. Well, where can it lead to? Well, there's not a lot of resistance all the way up into the you know, 80s and 90s, so that would be a target. Fastly, nice rising channel. Lateral price resistance coming in shortly above here, but the top of the channel beckons at 28. FTDR broke out of the base after a long downtrend and is channeling. Target is 40. FTI technology is rising channel, and right now I'm looking at 22 as an extension. If it can get right through where it is, there's some resistance. GBTC, another Bitcoin related stock or, or crypto related. You can see the beautiful coil. Mid channel target 23, upper channel target 29. GENI breaks out of a beautiful base and forms a flag. It popped Friday but backed off. But should this one get through eight and a quarter, I'd be looking for nine and a half and ten. Go. GO forms a beautiful base with a double top, neckline breakout. Look at that flag. Isn't that a nice setup? I think so. 
35 and a half and 38 targets. HLLY breaks out of a base, breakaway gap, rising channel at resistance here or near it. Should we get through that? The target is $9. HLX, beautiful base, breakout, retest, falling wedge, breakout, breakthrough resistance, 11 and 14 are targets. Harrow, after a long uptrend, it broke, but the falling wedge broke out, and now it's flagging. Um, watch for a pop out above 22 and a half with 24 and a half and 27 and a half targets. iHeart, after a long downtrend, it reversed, platformed, and broke out. Friday was a good day for it, up 11%. My target will be up around six. Immunogen. Tech traded swing when it popped and flagged here in the low teens. Got up to 20.69 and backed off. A little bit below, uh, right at the gap support right here. This has to hold 16 and a quarter, in my opinion. If it does, it targets 19 and a half, 20, and 22.3. IMNM breaks out of a base, pops, and has a falling wedge. Watch for the breakout. It needs over 7.62. Targets then are going to be nine. IMBT. Beautiful long rising channel. It's one of my top picks of the year. It's now wedging, but it's at support. I really need this one to hold 21. Um, and if it gets out over 23 and a half, your target's at 25 and 28. Break out an INVA, INFA, sorry. And, and a follow through as well. I had a 24 target. INMD breaks out of a long base and pulls back. As long as it holds the gap near 41.85, I'm still good with it. My targets are 46.7 and 49.50. INOD, long uptrend, broke out of a wedge and popped the resistance, backed off. I still like the overall look, but it's going to need, need to get to 14. Once you do that, 18 is your target. Intel, which we put out as a break, swing when it broke out, then pulled back and broke back out again. Now it's moving again. If it gets through this double top, 40 and 44 are targets. IONQ, breaks out of a base, surges. Consolidates, pops, rising flag, and pops again. It's finally pulled back a little bit. But my target's 24. IOT, a nice rising channel, current consolidation. It's near support. Needs to hold right around 24 and three quarters. If it does that, 28, 31 are targets. KALV broke out on Friday after an engulfing reversal day through double top. To me, it looks like it could be headed to 13. That's my target. Copen, with a one-year base and a breakout, it's still flagging, and it has for two months. But I needed to hold around the 175 area and then get up to past 230, 35. If so, three and a quarter and four are targets. Katos broke out on Friday and broke through resistance. It looks like your next target probably going to be around 20. LFMD breaks out of a base, runs up and now wedging. If the wedge breaks, we're looking at six and eight. Swing LI has been phenomenal since it broke out here in the mid 20s, and now it's gone to the mid 40s. High was 46.81, target 49. Mara flagging after a run up near the top of the channel. Next target 21. MDXG breaks out of a base and flags, breaks out of the flag and flags again, and then runs up to the target. And pulled back a little bit, but if it continues, 9, 11, and 13 are targets. MF with a big explosive 175 million shares traded on Friday with 400% gain. You don't see that too often. Usually, that kind of a thrust and a close at the high will have a follow through. Don't be surprised to see three, three and a half, four early next week. MGNI um, broke out, flagged, popped, and pulled way back. Then it based again and broke out and flagged. Right now it's flagging yet again. My target's 17. MOD, a beautiful rising channel, and it broke through the rising channel top. Inside day Friday le leads me to believe it's going higher. 48 and 55 targets. MRAM popped through Thursday and inside day Friday. My target's 11. I like to look at this one. Nice base breakout. We could see 13 of this. MRNS, similar breakout, retest, pop, flag, coil. Next target, 13, 13 and a half. 
MRUS similar, coiling for about 10 months now in a rising channel, your target, thir uh, 30 and 33. Micron broke out, we put a swing on it, it pulled right back, held the trend line and moved right back up again, filled the gap and popped again. If it gets to 72, 74, I can see 78 and 85 as targets. <clears throat> NEOG, pop, pull back, popped again, had a long falling wedge, break up, broke out, now it's flagging at resistance. Could very well get this into the high 20s. NEO, along with Lee and XPEB, very strong performance in the last couple of months. This one's gone from seven to 16, but it's pulled back and Friday was kind of a reversal day. Be careful, it needs to get back over 16. If so, 18 and 20 are targets. Nicola, with a pop wedge and a pop wedge broke out again, there's your fifth wave. Didn't quite complete it, and that was a nasty reversal Friday. Be very careful. NRDY breaking out of a big, long, year-long base. May have some upside here to seven and eight. Navitas, a junior, junior semiconductor has been coiling for a couple of months after a big run-up. Should it break out, I would target 12 and 14. OLMA, beautiful base, break out, retest, pop, and look at this two-month flag. Watch for a pop above 10. That's where it goes to 12 and 14. ORIC broke out a month ago. It's been consolidating ever since it's back to support. It needs to get to eight and three quarters, nine. Then your target's 11 and a half. PTC, a lot of resistance in the zone, but it's flagging. And should it get above it, I got a 14 and a half and 16 and a half target. PLAB, the declining channel was broken with a breakaway gap here. Uh, if the moving average is crossed over, it's gone vertical. Well, under 14, doubling to 27 niche, and now coiling or consolidating. My target is 28 and three quarters, 29. Powell exploded. We caught it right as it exploded, and then it pulled back for two days. I still think this is, uh, I said it was, uh, target was 88 and 98. We reached 90 on Thursday. I'm still looking for high, higher levels, 98. PSTG exploded in May, 22, the high 30s, but it's got a rising flag, very bullish pattern. Should it break out, we could run it to the low to mid 40s. QSI, long downtrend, broke out and ran up vertically, now wedging. If the wedge breaks, four and a half and five and a half per targets. RAD, long downtrend, exploded on Wednesday, followed through Friday and Thursday and Friday, and then a pullback. My target's are three and a half and four and a quarter now. Long rising channel on RCEL, currently in a flag type consolidation. I need it to hold 1780, your target's 24. RDW pop, we put a swing on it, it pulled back and now it's wedging. As long as it holds, 3, 10, 12, I'm good with it. Um, my target remains four and a half. RELY exploded Thursday, had an inside day Friday, but it broke out of a key multi-month pattern that tells me we could go into the mid and high 20s. RGTI with a one, two, three, four, five. I'm not sure if this has more to go, but it sure had a nice move from 30 some odd cents to uh, tenfold to 343. So, yeah, I may need to rest and relax in here, but if it does go, next target is five and three quarters. RIG broke out of a coil, popped, and now it's coiling again. My next target is near 10, looking strong in the right group. Riot, well, another crypto-related stock along with Mara. This stock has popped, and now it's coiling. Your target's the 22 and 27 if it goes. Rivian caught it perfectly as it ran out and broke out above the 16 range. It eventually made it to 28. Very nice swing, but it's got a rising flag, and if it isn't done, 29 and 35 are targets. ROIV, one of my top picks of the year, Roy Van, continues to look impressive. Friday was a nice reversal day. My target is 13 and 14. Roku broke out. We put a swing on it as it was breaking out. It worked. It went up to the first target zone, hit 99, 98.5, and pulled back. So I want to see if it holds here, backs and fills your next target, 104. Rover breaks out of a long base, explodes, and pulls back. So Friday's low is important. We need to hold around the 595.6 range. If it takes out seven, targets are eight and nine. RX, RX exploded, ran up, and it's got a falling wedge. 
if it takes the wedge out, the targets are 17 and 21. Rhythm. There's an old swing of ours here. It worked well, but then it came down. But it's broken back out. In particular, last week was a big week for it as it went from about 1780 to about 25. And now it's consolidating here. I like the look of an extension to 27 and a half. Schwab popped with a breakaway gap, and now it's got a perfect bull coil. I suspect we go higher, but market permitting, um, 68, 72, and eventually 80. Sweet Greens breaks out of a base and is forming a nice consolidation in this range here. As long as it holds that low, 13, 30, 35, I'm good. I guess above 16 and a half, 18 and a half to 21 and a half targets. SGH, this semiconductor broke out of a base and just kept running, going from 13 and a half to almost 30. Now the pullback. It appears to want to try to come out. I would say a retest of 30 and then move into the low to mid 30s could be possible. Uh, Sigmatron. Breakaway gap, explosive move, and a rising flag. Very bullish. Target seven and a half, eight and a half. Sketchers. One, two, three, four. A fifth wave gets me to 60, 61. That's my target on a follow through. SLNO with a one, two, three, four is also wedging here near the apex. My target would be a retest of six and then. Eight and a half, nine. SMCI, well, I, I had to show you this because it just keeps going. We first noticed this when it broke out back here um, in, in, in the 40s, and it has literally gone up a thousand percent since then, reaching up uh, another 18 points to 339, as high as 348. Extension target is four to 415. SoFi, well, the pullback wasn't pretty last week, it needs to hold, but it did have a breakout. On Monday, unfortunately, the rest of the week wasn't there. If it holds and bank bounces back up, I look for a retest of 11 and a half and then 14. Sapiens breaks out of a beautiful two month uh, consolidation flag and, can, and explodes. Extension target is 33. TDC breaks out of a base and just keeps running. My target was 59.60. I still am going to stick with that. Teladoc, it broke out. We put a swing, it popped, and then pulled back hard. Thing breaking support and the target and my stopping point. But keep an eye on it if it should it resurrect itself back above 27 and a half. Then I would look for 30 and 32 and a half. Uh, Techno Glass has been a swing of ours since way back here in November last year when it was trading in a 26 range. It eventually made it up to double to 54. And now the pullback consolidation. I'm going to need it to hold it right there. And then retest 53, but I think the tar mid channel target and the high 50s may be doable if the, the market cooperates. Stop would be under 44 and a half. TISI with a pop coil pop flag and now trying to break out again. If it gets to that level, then it moved to 12 and a half, 13 may be doable. Tupperware, what's to say about Tupperware? About a thousand percent move in two weeks. 61 cents is 617. Um, dangerous, yes. Can it go higher? Of course. So follow through target seven and a half. Uber, been a beautiful rising channel, but backing off, looking for 52 and 58, but it needs to hold the pullback low right about where it is here, 45. ULBI, explosive breakaway gap, and then finally finding resistance at eight and three quarters. The angles change a little bit. It looks like this now and this. Still, I believe it's a rising flag. My target's nine and a half and 11. Upwork, explosive breakaway gap as well with a follow through. We took out resistance. I now think we can see um, as high as 19 on the next move. URGN also breaks out of the base, explodes in two days and that pulls back and forth a perfect wedge. 28 and a half is my target if it pops. The ERA, Broke that broke out and now it's flagging. I like the look of this extension target could take you to 21 and 23. Bicor exploded. We put a swing on, I believe the stock then extended and pulled right back and has gone into the gap, but holding the 21. It needs to hold it right there, folks. VRT, breakaway gap and a rising pattern that tells me it's so strong it might be low 40s before long. 
XPEB along with the NEO and Lee all popped early in the week. This one got to 23.62. It pulled back five points. It's on support. If it holds, 23 and 28 are targets. XPO Logistics, as good as it gets. Great company, great chart. Targeting 87. YAL filed bankruptcy and the stock explodes from 43 cents to five dollars. Unbelievable. And now it's wedging. Well, must stop under two and a half. I break out over five and a quarter. We could see eight or nine. Unbelievable. And that is it, folks. Um, on the short side, I have nothing much to report, but I will show you a couple things. I have more work to do on this. But I did want to show you the stocks that I am following on the short side. Now, AZPN broke out and pulled right back, so I'm still maintaining a short on it, but technically it shouldn't be. CPRI, in a very weak trend, has not recovered at all. And quite frankly, the way I look at this, if it continues to drift lower and break down in this angle, which it looks like it wants to, you're headed for 30. PI, that was a great one as it imploded, formed a bear flag, and then just got crushed. This has gone from 90 to 60, basically, losing 30 points in a couple of weeks. So that was a perfect short for the tech traders. S uh, SPS and a new one. Oh, this should be on the long side. Sorry about that. Wrong, wrong list. BMEA, there you go, breaks down, forms a bear flag, breaks down and rises, but could not get through resistance. If should this one get underneath uh, 18, we're headed for 14 or less. INTA, just put this on a list. Look at that head and shoulder topping pattern. Wait for the break, but if it gets under 36 and a half, right where it is, it could plunge to 30 or even 26. MANH, I just put out a new swing short on it because after a long uptrend, it took it from 103 all the way up to double to 208. It came down and it's got a perfect bear flag now. So if it cracks here, we're looking for 180 and 165. OMC, Terrible looking group uh, chart. Bear flag, I'm looking for now 74 and 70. Rambus broke down and bounced, but barely. And if this does, if you see a takeout of 52 next week, I'm looking for 48, 44, and as low as 40. Sage broke a head and shoulder type top, came down and hardly, this is an engulfing bearish look. I think Sage is going to be down in the high 20s short term. SDGR. Breakdown, no bounce. Keep an eye on this one for further downside, a target of 32 and 28. Simo, it's pretty sloppy in here. We'll keep an eye on it. Um, a little, little dangerous looking. It's RPT, breaks down and bounces, but unable to get through resistance. If this goes lower, 96 and 88 are targets. And finally, SXT, sentient, long downtrend, and it broke down underneath support. I can see this one making a move into the $50 range, 10 more points. That's a one, two, three, four, and the fifth wave is not done. At least it doesn't appear to be. That's it for me, folks. That's it for this weekend, too. We've had a long week trading, and this week we have to pay attention to the technicals, which right now are very dangerous looking to me. For now, HB out. Have a great weekend. Please review this a couple of times so you're prepared for next week. And I'll talk to you on Monday. Have a great weekend.